Have you ever wondered why pilots go down and check the aircraft after the flight? Or why student pilots go around their trainer aircraft before they go inside the cockpit? That is called visual inspection. Hi, my name is Josh Lim, and in this video, I will be explaining to you what is visual inspection. But before we go in for visual inspection, we need to know first what is non-destructive inspection. Non-destructive inspection, NDIs, are also known as non-destructive te testings, NDPs, is a technique used by the industry to evaluate the properties of material or component of an aircraft, including a structure or system for defects and discontinuities without causing damage to the original part. By its name, it means that it is a test or the inspection on a material that is not destructive. There are many types of NDTs, but for this video, we'll be talking about visual inspection. Visual inspection is the oldest and the most common form of NDI for aircrafts. Approximately 80% of all NDI procedures are accomplished by direct visual methods. Now, what if the cracks are small or another component is blocking the material that needs to be inspected? That's where tools come in. Visual inspection may be enhanced by the use of appropriate tools, such as magnifying instruments, borescope, light sources, video scanners, and other devices that can help in seeing the defect within the component. Through visual inspection, we can detect material discontinuities, such as cracks, corrosion, contamination, surface finish, weld joints, solder connections, and adhesive response. It can also help verify when defects are found by other methods of NDIs. So with that, does that mean that it is the best NDI method there is? Not quite. You see, there are different NDIs that have advantages and disadvantages. For visual inspection, it is inexpensive and highly portable. You can have immediate results, and it required minimum training and minimum part preparation. However, because it is visual, we can only detect surface discontinuities. Generally, only large discontinuities are detected, and misinterpretation of scratches may occur. So let's go to the appropriate tools to be used in visual inspection. First is the flashlight. The flashlight must be suitable for industrial use and where applicable. Safety approved by manufacturers as suitable use in hazardous atmospheres such as aircraft fuel tanks. Second is the inspection mirror. It is used to view areas that is not in the normal line of sight. Third is the simple magnifiers which are basically single converging lens in order to magnify whatever it is that we are inspecting. Last is the boroscope, which consists of a rigid or flexible tube, which has an objective lens or camera on one end, and an eyepiece or display on the other, which is linked by an optical system in between. Boroscopes are widely used in aircraft and engine maintenance programs to reduce the need for costly turbines. Fun fact, aircraft turbines have access ports that are specifically designed for boroscopes. Since it is small and flexible, it is also used to determine airworthiness of difficult to reach components. It can also be used to inspect interiors of hydraulic chambers, valves for pitting, scoring, porosity and tool marks, inspect cracked cylinders, verify proper placement of seals, and may be used to locate foreign objects in engines and airframes. Now we know what is visual inspection, where and when it is used, and the tools to aid it, but how do we conduct visual inspection? Here are the steps. First, we do a preliminary inspection of the overall general area for cleanliness, presence of foreign objects, deformed or missing fasteners, security of parts, corrosion, and damage. You can already use the tools mentioned earlier if needed. Second is the corrosion treatment. Because of the criticality of corrosion, personnel who conducts the NDIs must be familiar of the appearance of corrosion and has, must have a training and experience of corrosion detection. Moreover, corrosion must be treated during the preliminary inspection. Before inspecting, we need to provide adequate lighting, especially in the parts being inspected. The personal comfort of the inspector can be a factor in reliability of visual inspection, and therefore the inspector should be comfortable during the process. Noise is also a factor and increases the likelihood of errors and therefore must be addressed. Inspection area access plays also a huge importance in doing visual inspection where access can lead to poor interpretation of results. There. Now, the areas to be inspected must be cleaned. Then we can fully carefully inspect the area for discontinuities using optical aids as required. For our last step, record keeping, all discrepancies must be documented by written report, photographs, or video recording. The size and shape along with the location of the discontinuity must also be recorded along with the rework performed. That's it for visual inspection. Now let's have a recap. 
Visual inspection is the most common type of NDI. Visual inspection may be enhanced by the use of appropriate tools such as magnifying instruments, borescope, light sources, image scanners, and other devices that can help in seeing the defect within the component. Visual inspection is inexpensive and highly portable. It can have immediate results and it requires minimum training and minimum part preparation. However, we can only detect surface discontinuities. Generally, only large discontinuities are detected and, and misinterpretation of scratches may occur. Now, to perform the visual inspection, here are the steps. First is preliminary inspection. Second is corrosion treatment. Third is lighting. Fourth is personal comfort. Five is noise. Six is inspection area access. Then seventh is pre-cleaning. Eight is inspection. And nine is the record keeping. So that's it for visual inspection. For more information regarding visual inspection, you may check advisory circular 43.13-1B. As for this course, it has taught me the importance of engineering production management maintenance and planning along with the standards and tools used in the aircraft maintenance. That's it. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. See you in my next video.